In this exercise, we're going to go a little bit deeper into nested animations with this car with the spinning wheels. So the car is being tweened across the stage and inside the car is a symbol called wheel spin and inside wheel spin is a wheel that is spinning. So let me show you how it's made. All right, so let's get this show on the road. I've got an FLA open here. We've got this background layer and we have one frame and it's just this dark gray. So you'll see my library is kind of loaded up with a bunch of stuff. A lot of it are different parts of the car so I'll explain those in a little bit we have the body solid we have the door handle we have the full car which is a Volkswagen GTI which is awesome we have this shading and lights thing we have a shadow we have the wheel and we have windows and dark trim all right so all these little pieces that make up the car basically so the full car is the GTI so what I'm gonna do is first go to the background all right so we have this nice sort of subtle gradient that goes from a gray to white back down to gray and we're just going to align that perfectly on the stage we'll do a boom left boom top and we're going to want to animate the car so one of the rules we got to put that in a new layer so i'll just name that the car layer and let's just take out the gti and throw it over here and you'll notice that the car includes that cool shadow and let's just put it off to the left all right, you'll notice that the background gets kind of bright white here. That's kind of where we want the wheels lined up. It doesn't have to be anywhere perfect. We'll put it off stage. And then let's just go out to frame number 60 or so. And I'm gonna hit F6 to add a keyframe. And then I'm going to take the car and move it over to the right. Now you may have noticed that as soon as I added that keyframe in the car layer, I'm seeing the gray background again. Well. In frame number one, there's the background, right? And in frame 60, it's not there. Now we're going way back to a earlier lesson, but remember we have these potential frames here, okay? When I added the keyframe in frame 60, I only extended the car layer all the way out to frame 60. I don't have enough frames in the bottom background layer to see the background in frame 60. So I'm just gonna click on frame 60 here and what's the magic one? What is it? Yep, F5 is going to add frames all the way to there. So now as I scrub through the entire 60 frames of the movie, you'll see that uh, I see the background. So in frame 60, I'm going to click on that keyframe there and let's just drag the car straight over. Actually, what I'm going to do is hold down shift and that's going to make it so that I do not accidentally move it left uh, top to bottom all right it locks it to move only left and right by holding down shift so i'm just going to right click anywhere between frame 1 and 60 and i'm going to do create classic tween and this is something you know we've seen a bunch of times so now let me just hit play and there goes my car across the stage i'm going to go to control test movie in animate and that's going to generate the swift file for me it's over here off screen there we go and so now we see the car kind of sliding across the stage, all right? It's going uh, It would really be nice if those wheels could spin. So let's go into the actual car itself. I'm gonna to go to the library and double click on the GTI symbol. And then now you'll see we have this really nice version of the car that we're seeing. And check it out, let me just make sure we can see all of our layers. You're going to see that we have all these different layers inside the GTI symbol. So inside the edit bar, we see scene one GTI. This tells us that we're inside the timeline of the GTI. And what I'm going to do is just toggle the visibility of these layers on and off. So we have shading and lights here. So let me just click on the dot under the eye. And then you'll see that ah, it looks like a very flat red. So we have this layer that just contains these very subtle gradients that give us uh, the lights and some sort of details of highlights and shading. We then have the door handle, so I'm toggling that on and off. We have wheel front, we get rid of that. We have wheel back, and then we have windows dark, so we get rid of the windows, and also some of the uh, dark black plastic on the bottom trim, uh, body solid, so now I took away the red solid body and now you can better see um, what we had as a, that sort of highlight clip, okay? Just a bunch of gradients that give us all the sort of 3D uh, 
shading and highlighting. So body solid is just basically, you know what, what I'm gonna do? Check this out. I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt and click on the dot underneath the eye and boom, we get rid of, we turn off the visibility of all the other layers. And so now I have this red shape. If I click on that, I can go inside of it and it says I'm inside now body solid. So this is pretty cool about, you know, nesting things inside of symbols. So I have a body solid symbol inside the GTI. I can click on that shape and check this out. I can change the color to be this blue. And then I go back to the GTI, turn on all the layers, and now I have an awesome blue GTI. Let me just go back into the body solid symbol and go back to the red that I had, which I believe CC3300. Cool. And then I'll go back to the GTI and now it's red again. So inside the GTI, we have all these different parts that make up the car. Now what I'm most interested in are these wheels. So if I click on this symbol here, notice the properties panel is gonna tell me that it's an instance of wheel. And then this thing in the front is also an instance of wheel. So we have these two wheel symbols on the car, but I want them to spin around. So what I'm going to do is put this one inside of a movie clip that's going to have it spinning. So I'm gonna select the wheel and go to modify, convert to symbol. And again, I've told you that's really insert into symbol. And I'm gonna call this wheel dash spin. And it's also going to be a movie clip. And I'm gonna hit okay. And so now nothing here is really visually changing on the stage, but let me click on that wheel, make sure it's selected. And in the properties panel, it's gonna tell me that it's an instance of wheel spin, okay? So if I double click on wheel spin, I go inside of the wheel spin symbol, and here, guess what I have? My original wheel. So wheel lives inside wheel spin. And wheel is what I want to actually rotate around. So what I'm gonna do for now is just go out to frame number 30. I'm gonna hit F6 to add a keyframe. So let me go back to frame number one, and I'm just gonna right click and say create classic tween. Now remember that rotation is a property of the frame, right? When we did that lesson where we did the basic animations of rotation, I'm just gonna click on the frame and say rotate clockwise once, okay? And then you'll see that the wheel actually spins. So if I go back to the GTI now, this wheel here is an instance of wheel spin. This wheel here is an instance of wheel. So something funny is gonna happen. Let me do a command return to export the Swift and check out what we have. Hmm, we have one wheel spinning and the other one is just not spinning. So what I need to do is replace this instance of wheel with wheel spin. So check this out, I'm gonna right click and do something called swap symbol. Here it is way down here. And now I can choose what symbol I want to replace. So I'm gonna take wheel and replace it with wheel spin, hit okay. And then now I can see that this is actually wheel spin. And when I test my movie out, you'll see that the car is now driving and both wheels are spinning. Now it looks pretty cool, but it looks a little bit jittery. I don't know, I'm not, it's, I don't know if there's enough frames really to show everything moving smoothly. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna go back to frame number one and I'm gonna give myself some more time to see this animation. What I wanna do is make it four seconds long. So watch this trick. I'm just going to drag the playhead anywhere in between frame one and 60 and with no frame selected, I'm gonna hit F5. And what that's gonna do is push the end of my timeline out. I'm adding frames. It's a little hard to see here. Ah, I had to resize my window so that I have this scroll bar here, okay? That helps a lot. So let me just continue to F5 out. And so you'll see that I'm pushing both those frames down and I'm just gonna go all the way, excuse me, until this guy ends up at four seconds. And there we go. So let me test this one more time. And there you'll see that I like the speed of the car, 
but it's like the wheels are almost going too fast, all right? It's, it's really kind of odd that the wheels are spinning much faster than the car is moving. So here it's always a little bit of a trial and error. So let me just double click on wheel spin and I'm going to make this animation two seconds long. So I could hit F5 all the way there or I could just click on this frame here and drag it out to two seconds. So let me just test this out now and here I'm really liking the timing. It's really nice and smooth. Um, everything's nice, looking really nice and clean. So there we have it. We have a symbol moving across the stage that has a nested animation inside of it. And we have this just really lovely motion. I'm digging it, all right? So in the next video, what I'm going to do is let you take a stab at this and I'll have full follow along instructions. Awesome.